What's up, Data Pipeliners? Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. We've got a brand new setup, and today we're going to be experimenting with a brand new data set. Today's data set is the API data set. This came out with 0.16.0 of Kedro, and it's a data set that I've been wanting to use for a while. It allows a user to download whatever data that they need from any HTTP data sources. So effectively, it actually wraps around the requests library and then creates an HTTP request to your target and then returns your request response object. Now, if you're new to the channel, we talk about Kedro, we talk about data engineering, and we just want to help you guys make better data pipelines. So let's go ahead and get started in today's video. Now, the Kedro API dataset itself is actually a little bit difficult to find uh, documentation for. If you actually go to the Kedro documentation at this time, you only have a, a very rudimentary breakdown of the dataset itself. It shows um, an example set up for the dataset, uh, as well as you know, some, of, some minor descriptions of the different portions. Uh, but what it doesn't really talk about is it doesn't talk about so much how to use the data set. And the truth is that this data set itself, and if you look very closely here, the documentation is a little bit misleading. It says here that there's a save function on the data set, but actually there is no save function. If we go right into the code, the source code for this API data set, you can see that if you scroll down to the save, it actually returns a data set error. What this means is that the API data set is a read-only data set. So when you create the data set, you actually have to create all of the parameters that you wish to send in your requests object to your HTTP server inside of the catalog YAML itself or wherever you define the API data set. Now, this is perfectly fine, and there's a lot of utility that is still built into that, um, but we can see how it can be a little bit limited. So let's go ahead and try this out. We're going to start up a Kedro Jupyter Notebook. I have one right here for our API data set. So we're going to go ahead and open our notebooks and create a new API data set notebook. Inside of this notebook, um, because we're using our, of course, uh, Kedro Jupyter Notebook command, because we're using this command, we have all of the data sets as well as the Kedro context available to us inside of the notebook without having to modify any path variables. Let's go ahead and import this API data set. Now we have access to the data set. Let's create a new instance of this guy. Flipping back to the documentation, let's go ahead and grab the parameters that we can use here. So we have our URL, we have our method, the data, and then the parameters that we would like. And so the params in this case are the URL parameters. These are the get request parameters. The data is your put and post data. The headers are the headers, of course. And then your auth is your simple authentication. The timeout is the timeout for the data itself. And this is how long it takes before the request object gives up. Now, going back into our Jupyter Notebook, I actually have here a webhook site URL already prepared that we can use as our URL. Let's make this data set very simple and let's use the URL directly for this data set. And then we're going to go ahead and just call the load function on this guy. So when we call the load function, we should get a request object back. And you can see here we do have a request object. And if we look inside of our webhook site, we can see that the get request was made. And again, the get request is the default method for the data set. If we want to add any extra data, we have to change the method itself to post. And then if we want to add in our data, we use our data parameter. Now, after adding this data uh, parameter, we run this guy. If we do a load again using this data set and check our response. And here in the webhook site, we can see that we have our brand new request and it includes our form values. Hi there, by there. Now, the issue with this is that if you want to use JSON data, what you actually have to do is you have to do two things. The first is you have to import your JSON live module 
and using that JSON module, you have to dump the JSON string manually using data dumps. And not only that, but you also have to modify the header for the request with the content type being application JSON. So now that we've created this, we can go ahead and recreate the data set. Let's go into our webhook site. Let's delete this guy. And then we'll wait for the new response. We're going to do our DS load. And we can see here, we get the new response with the raw content directly created as a JSON file. Now this is all well and good, but let's see if we can create this data set within our catalog itself. Let's see if we can find an API that we would like to use. Now one API we could potentially use is the JSON placeholder dot typeycode.com API. This is a public and free API that's created by typeycode uh, to allow users like you and me to test our request code. Let's go ahead and grab this request here for a post. We're going to update our URL. We'll leave the default values in for now and we'll run that. Now again, when we do a load, we get a response object back. So let's open up that response object. And one trick you can do with our Jupyter Notebooks is that whatever the output is here, that, that number, if you do an underscore and then type that same number, you can actually get access to that particular output. So you can see here, this is the response from that uh, previous cell. So looking at this guy here, if we open up our content, we can see the byte encoded content, which is actually the JSON string of that one post from the API. If we use dot JSON, and I believe it's a function, it will parse that JSON for us. And so here it is. What's cool about this API is that if you pass in any data, it will actually echo that data itself. And so here, for example, you can see that they're doing a post method um, with the JSON stringify, and they're getting back this JSON output. So let's go ahead and do that with ours. If we uncomment this guy here, and then make sure that the URL is correct. Let's make sure that it goes to posts. We should see a new um, response that includes our originally sent data. So if we do response.json, we get the hi there, by bear, and then an ID that comes automatically from their data. So now the next question is, how do we create this data set in a catalog? And how do we make sure that the JSON data is being correctly dumped. Opening up PyCharm, I have here a brand new Ketro pipeline. No, nothing special about it. We can go ahead and write in our nodes for ourselves. So uh, let's first start by creating a node that will take the output from our API data set and print it to the console. So that'll look very simple. It's going to be a node where we input the node from our Ketro pipeline. Using Lambda, we can easily print out X and take our inputs and outputs. Now, because this is a brand new data set, we have to create it inside of our catalog. Let's open up the catalog in the YAML file and create our API example. The type, of course, is API.API dataset, and the URL is going to be our posts URL. Let's go ahead and use post1. And inside of our output, what we're going to do is we're actually going to call the JSON function. And so we should be able to see the JSON object getting printed to our standard out. We go ahead and run this pipeline with Kedra run. We see here the printed output. And it says here very clearly the JSON parsed Python dictionary inside of our identity function. This is great. Now the next question is, can we replicate the post data in a JSON format? And I think this one is probably the most difficult part about using the API data set and that you have to manually create the JSON string in order to generate the data for that post method. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay. We successfully finished what I think is the correct configuration, but by removing the slash one from the URL, 
we should get the correct one. And there it is, hi there, bye bear. So you can see, this is how you can start to use the API data set. You can create an API request that will load data from your HTTP and then bring it into your Ketro pipeline. Now, it would be really great to just pass in an object into the supported JSON parameter that requests has. If you take a look again at your request object, you do have the ability to pass in a JSON parameter, a keyword parameter with the actual payload. And by doing this, it will automatically set your header content type to application JSON, as well as dump the data that is being passed in. So I think that's a very useful convenience function. And if you take a look at the Ketro Extras API data set, that function doesn't exist. So it actually is not available for you. For those kinds of improvements, I think you know what we can do. Because Ketro is an open source project, why don't we write those improvements ourselves? And so in the next video, we're going to be writing these new contributions to the API data set to allow us to better utilize it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.